Hello, welcome on discernment keys. Well, I was working on the false prophet topic, and um, I realized that the transgender agenda was on the menu, so I decided to split this video about the feminine false prophets into parts. Let's go. As for this spiritual topic, um, I just want to say it's just like when you go to the restaurant. If there's too many meal uh, on the menu, you should ask yourself, well, uh, about the where the, do the the food comes from, and uh, is it fresh food, and uh, what is the master degree of the cooker? who invite you uh, and uh, cook all these uh, elements together uh, to sell you a dish. So we're talking here about feminine spiritual teachers and I have absolutely no problem if it's a beautiful woman. Um, but the, all the question is how is she going to use this uh, beauty, this physicality inside her teachings. The, the art of seduction, and I mean by, by this, using all the tricks of the feminine, of the physical body, is really a feminine art. And you probably need to be a woman born to be able to discern whether uh, this, uh, these tricks are misused or not. You probably need to be decontaminated yourself from the gender stereotypes. And all the question is to to be able to see if the teacher is using this uh, physical body, this beauty, to distract you, to draw your attention to the mask more than it should. Or if it's um, a beauty that is fully coherent with the individual with her story. In other words, is the beauty is a uh, manifestation of a real life path on, or is it fabricated beauty to match some kind of stereotypes in spirituality? Since 2013, we have all these people, uh, I mean, women spiritual teachers uh, with uh, this kind of uh, beauty, sexy, very standardized, in fact, and fully claiming that it's okay for them to use this uh, beauty uh, to enhance their spiritual teachings. It's just like if they're telling us that they are the manifestation of the true sacred feminine. It's all about discerning the coherence degree between the content and the container. I really think that this is uh, a master tool in the discernment work we have to do. So all these containers can pretty much uh, well mimic uh, with uh, certain uh, vocal frequencies, uh, wisdom, so I don't have the time to compare some uh, some of these uh, uh, voices uh, in spiritual teachings with the all these artificial voices invading us in the public spaces, you know, in the drugstores, um, at the bus stations, um, at the train stations, in shopping centers, everywhere, in fact. But I think that we should analyze this too, because this AI use all these tricks to seduce us, most likely to mesmerize us. Because don't forget that the voice and the vocal frequency is the master tool used in hypnosis. So I don't know how it feels for you, but I can be immediately annoyed when um, in a spiritual teachings I hear uh, this same rhythm 
tone of voice speaking to you like this, like all the artificial voice you have on emergency numbers or hotel services or uh, in the train station announcing to you when the next train will come. It feels to me uh, overrated, overplayed. I don't feel like uh, I have a real and authentic human being talking. It rather feels like there's a program, a robot, disclosing God's no what. All this is part of the controlled disclosure consisting in exposing more and more pedophile networks, satanist elites in the false spiritual hierarchy, but the person and people disclosing all of this might be, in most of the case, contacted by positive aliens or um, being under some uh, kind of astral realms control uh, without even being aware of it, or maybe, most likely, it suits them fine. So I'm going to try to read a text uh, with this uh, tone, this composure, mimicking wisdom, stillness, and sovereignty. Let's go. Exopolitics is a discipline studying the relationships between our human, terrestrial civilization and other intelligent civilizations supposed in the universe, extraterrestrials. Whereas politics covers everything that concerns the government of a community, a state, or several states inter internationally, by grouping the different parties that share the same agendas, the need to move to the exopolitic, which means to extend the politics beyond planet Earth and to take into account the other civilization populating our universe, having also their own political agendas, is the logical continuity for a civilization opening up to its cosmic dimension and to the existence of other civilization, whether on other planets or exoplanets, that is to say, outside our solar system. So you see that it's a little bit hard for me past a certain point all my authentic emotional being come back and it's not possible to speak uh, with us this uh, tonality with these frequencies for hours and hours of a symposium. There's a problem. I did this first to, to have fun and to so that you you can see how easy it is, because after all, you only know my voice. So it's very easy for a human being to mimic an artificial intelligence speaking, but it's much more difficult for an AA to mimic the entire complex emotional spectrum of a real human being, according to the proverb, who can do more, can do less. and. That's what they're trying to do. They're working extremely hard for this because, you know, the budget for emotional facial recognition is the most important in the AI enterprise so that we won't be able to make the difference between who is who. And we can imagine in the near future that the very few real authentic native human beings will believe that they are artificial bodies built by this AI who will have take over the planet. It's a complete inversion of history and genesis where the real primitive human will believe to be the extraterrestrials on their own planet. That's what's going to happen if we don't expose this going on. And as there's a resistance of native human being, and as they can't produce complete synthetic human beings uh, being able to completely uh, pose as human beings. Thus, the social engineering standardizing our emotional spectrum. By this way, they modify our own representation of the meaning of what it means to be a human being to the point that we won't be able anymore to ask ourselves the question or to respond to it wisely.
The strategy is all about inversion. It consisting in uh, putting false angel demons looking like angels so that everybody will look at them as angels. Meanwhile, normal people uh, becoming angry but without fully understanding it and why, just because they feel that everything is going wrong, everything is upside down, and for each matter of concern, there are sightings organized. Oh, you feel concerned about social problems and injustice? Oh, you can campaign for the Democrats, or you can work for uh, NGO. You you feel concerned about health of planet Earth? You have anti-specism, and everything is working this way, and on and on and on, and in the end, nobody has any kind of uh, bigger picture understanding of what's really going on behind the scene, behind the curtain, and in the end everybody is going, going to be very angry for very legitimate reason, just because they can feel that a serious invasion is going on, and they will be designated as being the demons to be shut down. That's the very bad show taking place right now on our planetary theater. At the beginning of my YouTube channel, I never intended to, namely, talk about anybody or expose namely people but for the time being with my own perceptive abilities and my own insight I feel like it's time to expose what's been going on on the spiritual scene since 2013.
I insist too much, it comes to a point where it glitches. So, an organic human has the power to drive a machine crazy. Can you imagine if we were just a few thousand to launch, to make research on the same people at the same time? Like all these uh, transgender men displaying themselves on YouTube with millions of views and followers to explain how to be so very girly. So these these are the softest one because they are the other one who are complaining uh, because they had their little heart bro broken when the guy they seduced uh, without telling him that they were men born uh, refused to have sex with them and how horrible it was and how how terrible it was and it's really not fair that men don't understand that anal sex is so very better than vaginal sex because indeed who can want or desire a vagina bleeding once a month so uh, don't you think that's a little bit too much mostly when you quite begin to understand how a uh, planetary consciousness works like uh, Harald Kotzvela explains it the importance of the pineal gland the way we are manipulated by sigils our subconscious etc etc the importance of the crystal once again don't take my word for it to your own research but if some information has disappeared from the web since the time you will have my information about this topic just don't be surprised so I'm afraid there's no doubt anymore so that it is true that around these same dates of late 2012, 2013, I saw all these blonde women with the same haircut popping up like mushrooms over the web and having the same story to tell about their great spiritual awareness or enlightenment after they lost their job, they've been fired or had some problems, uh, all sorts of problems in their lives. In fact, a storyline completely matching mine and using the same keywords than my own awareness at the same time. By keywords I mean mostly discernment and the fact that there was a big problem with the New Age and all these people lying to themselves and then lying to other people. And here it is, there is Laura Marie TV talking about discernment, problem with the New Age, exposing the New Age uh, uh, imposter, uh, just like a ready-made thinking, ready-made believing. So this was my thought in 2011. And I stopped counting the, the number of times that I was thinking about uh, these some topics, finding nobody thinking about it at the same time and a few years after oops, I found on the web all these people having a thriving business on these very topics isn't it bizarre how is it possible the very first time I heard Laura Mary uh, talking about spiritual uh, topic uh, I had finally the this familiar impression to, to hear my own thoughts in the mouth of somebody else. And th here is the problem, the lack of creativity. Because I had the same feeling when I read uh, Scott Peck uh, or Krishnamurti, but it was not the same. I was just reading the same way of thinking than mine, but with different words. Here it was just a copy pass thing. And we know that they have this technology to extract our thoughts, to copy them and to, to pass them, to um, inject them in any container of their choice, hybrids or whatever. And as in the same period of time in 2013, Cameron Day wrote his uh, two articles 
exposing the new age imposture and the false spiritual hierarchy. Uh, I think the proof is made here that we're facing an upgrade, a planetary upgrade, a program which code's name is Laura Mari, which aims to counter the new awareness that human beings would inevitably do after 2012 when the apocalypse wouldn't happen. So they orchestrated this upgrade in 2011 to inject this in our reality in 2013 or maybe even it is a time loop, whatever, but it was done in order that we couldn't even discover this. So it's a race against the clock, manufacturing false people with false history to be inserted in the authentic human reality in order to maintain them on the tracks, on the rails of the belief system of the New World Order which is New Age. So I've been waiting five years studying all this happening since 2013, except that I'm starting to have very serious and solid answers about what's really going on. Who is who, who's lying, who belongs to the program, and who's not. So this is the, the fruit of about 24 hours of research. But I imagine that if I dig... Uh, deeper I would find a lot more but I um, found uh, dance academies in the US in Europe uh, there's a, uh, a girl doing pool dance lap dance the, the name the spelling is even the same it's Mary M A R I E it's it's even not ending with a Y in the US where it should uh, Mary in US is not uh, ending with a I.E. is ending with a Y, if I'm correct. So our French Laura Marie, with, uh, in her interview on TIPA TV, uh, she's uh, exposing transhumanism agenda, implants, uh, mind control agenda, etc. And she's clearly part of what she's exposing. So the manipulation goes that far. It's illustrated by the examples I gave with these two women born with all their creativity, their real, I think, authentic spiritual quest and who would eventually end up with a AA transsexual as a model. So it's really a viral thing, um, a silent as assimilation, just like in the uh, Cara St. Louis book uh, that we're facing here. And we should be a lot more to do this research and to uh, uncover all these uh, artificial insertions of false people uh, in our reality, guiding it where it should never go. The strategy is quite simple and clear to me. It's about uh, covering the few voice of uh, authentic human beings, exposing and discovering what's really going on in this Truman Show, inserting many, many other voices of uh, belonging to the uh, AI program to cover the real voices to populate the spiritual scene in their places. So all this standardizing work is done in order to fragmentate us inside of us. Each of us is fragmented because of this uh, identification process uh, which takes place in uh, the mirror effect of the interpersonal relationships. And uh, so that none of us can really uh, f find himself or herself as a whole. And for each level of fragmentation, a siding is available. And the confrontation between all these sidings is cleverly orchestrated. Thank you.
happening with the false prophets, uh, feminine ones, uh, on the false spiritual scene is uh, very well described in the comic strip Sky Doll. Why the attention of the population is drawn to false religion orchestrated by the Jesuits? Behind the scene, backstage, PTBGL. Finally, especially P and G, P for pansexuality. Partus, pedophilia, Aphrodite has been seduced only to produce children, good to be sacrificed. It reminds me of some conversation I had with a colleague when we were redoing the top management um, speech and we were laughing about it, saying uh, <coughs> pipe masturbation. Yeah, that's it. While all the perceptual abilities of the human being is uh, completely hypnotized by all this theater scene, this Truman show. Meanwhile, the real planetary consciousness is being kept in prison somewhere. So in this very moment where it's necessary to be able to discern between real humans and all this false human invasion we're facing, I'm going to venture to give my own definition of what it means to be a human being. I think that once we really overcome the dualistic demergic programming in terms of real false, good, evil, all this mindset, this inside box mindset, then we allow ourselves to express the entire emotional abilities of a human being in full coherence uh, with uh, our own unique and uh, individual life path. Like I've explained in my uh, video about the bigger picture in uh, late 2017, I think that we've created this cosmic game to have fun, to experience this ability, to express all these emotional abilities. But the game uh, escaped us, uh, the game uh, turn wrong because some of us, uh, I mean by us, the divine sparks, some divine sparks uh, forgot where they initiated from their true origin. Just like a child lost uh, in his video games, uh, in his PlayStation. So as for spiritual teachings, but I think it's true for for everybody, for um, for every interpersonal relationship. When we have someone who has a very narrow and monotonous emotional spectrum, then we should wonder if there's not a problem. 
with this person. I mean, a real benevolent person might not be someone who will always be smiling to you, nice to you, kind to you, flattering you, etc. In a word, expressing just one polarity in this dualistic box we are locked in. I'm following here the same thought process than when uh, it's about diagnosis uh, a sociopath, someone who's only able to express evil and all the behaviors associated with uh, bad in this very confined box of this cosmic game. I think that we are, we recover our entire humanity when we're able to express the entire emotional spectrum, but in full mastery and in full awareness. This means that you can explain why you are angry. Because there's a story behind it. There's an emotional life that has been lived, a real one, a, a life that has been understood and that you can share with somebody else. So I'm not saying here that the Nahamadi scrolls are the revelation among the re revelations because uh, it's quite clear that these scrolls have been read by the Archons, they have been falsified, uh, but the people who had this knowledge were hunted down to death. And never, nevertheless, the story told in these scrolls is quite disturbing for the official history of mankind. Mostly in the origin of the world and the apocryphon of John is quite interesting if we read them again with the technological angle, with the um, AI perspective. Because here is described several attempts to create an artificial Adam, an artificial human being. And several times it didn't work. Several times Adam finally reconnect to its true origin, to its true spiritual origin, and defeat the Archons, or if you prefer, the AI. So, it would be wishable, uh, it happens several times then, at least two times. So, uh, it would be good, it would be great if this time they're being defeated once and forever and for good. And this means we shouldn't fall again for their robots mimicking a false empathy, false goodness, false benevolence, whether they're organic or inorganic robots. As a conclusion, I think that we all need to see through the mask, to see through the illusion. All these people are talking to you of uh, the heart vibration. Uh, they're, talking, they're talking a language that is authentic and true to you, but they're doing this being disguised. If you look at the very core of their physical body, I mean the skeleton, it's not even the same person who talks to you from one time to another. So in the end, the focus of attention that is required here is the depth of your own programming concerning the gender stereotypes. If you think that being a woman, a wise woman, it's about being 100% of the time, 24 hours a day, in this monochord, monotonic tonality of goodness, softness, gentle, etc., I think that you're mistaken, you're being deceived by the gender stereotypes programming. Because once again, a woman is an entire, complete human being 
and she's able to express the entire emotional spectrum of a human being. So unless you are holding on too strongly to this program, Gender Stereotypes, while listening to a feminine spiritual teacher, you need to reconsider your own expectations concerning the behaviors. Because once again, being a complete authentic woman-born spiritual female is not about being gentle and soft all the time. It's not possible, mainly nowadays. You can express yourself or speak very firmly. Sometimes it's required and it shouldn't bother you. And we need authentic, sovereign male human beings to fight alongside with us in this spiritual war that's been led against us by using us, programming us so that we kill each other and carry this AI agenda in their place, in the place of these false beings who don't have the courage to make the full experience of physicality. So I say you bye-bye and see you soon maybe for another video. <laughs>